Hello YouTube viewers, my name is Matthew Jackson. Welcome to my channel CCM Drummer. I need to give you an update on my drumming situation. I have since moved, relocated back to Houston, and I'm now living in a 1200 foot, 1200 square foot condo, as opposed to a 4,000 square foot house, where when you live in a freestanding house, obviously you got options and but living in a condo, playing the acoustic drums is really not a viable option if I'm going to continue uh, uh, being a practitioner of the percussive arts here and applying my craft uh, because, um, you know, noise requirements and stuff like that. And, of course, the uh, president of the uh, Homeowners Association is my neighbor, so he'd be the last guy I'd want to be pissing off here. So I had to explore my options and what I'm going to do to play in this type of environment. I did explore the option of buying the uh, soft stroke cymbals, you know, those cymbals that have a lot of holes in them and when you hit them you can barely hear the crash and then you can put mesh heads on your acoustic drum kit as well and that will quiet the uh, drum set. Or I explored the possibility of getting an uh, electronic drum set. And between the two, I decided to go ahead and go the electronic drum set option. Now, there are many brands of electronic drum sets. Well, the, I think the three foremost that I'm aware of are the Roland V-Drums, the Simmons, and of course, this is the Alesis. I'm sure there are others, and I'm sure, and I'm not... Um, anyway, putting down the other brands. I chose, I settled on the Alesis based on pricing, based on availability, and based on the features. Now, the specific uh, model of Alesis that I have here, that you see here, is called the Command Mesh. Uh, and the difference between a... Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and break this down. When you get to uh, electronic drums, the drums part more so, you really have two basic types. You have the pad drums and then you've got the mesh drums. And, and the mesh ones are really more like drums because they're an actual drum head, where the pads are more like a practice pad that are activated by a trigger. So the, 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 um, the model that's below this one would be the Command X, where the, all the toms are pads. And then we have the snare that's the drum. Uh, here, the, the, uh, the, the distinction, what makes the, the, uh, the uh, command mesh, the command mesh, is, is it's the first line of drums that, that have the mesh for the toms, okay? And uh, now on the mesh series, all the toms are eight inches. The, the uh, snare is 10 inches, and of course the cymbals and the hi-hat are 10 inches. Uh, that brings one of the challenges to uh, playing electronic drums because now the drums are a little bit smaller than what I'm used to on the acoustic kit. Like, for instance, with the floor tom, I'm dealing with an 8-inch floor tom where, I'm, where in the past I was uh, dealing with a 14-inch um, floor tom. So that's a big difference. So you got smaller targets. And on an electronic drum set, you really need to hit that... Hit, hit it dead center and you got to be deliberate, get a good stroke. Uh, where on an acoustic kit you get a little more lead way. If you're off just a few inches, you can still get the same tone. So you got to be more precise, have a little more discipline in your stroking on an electronic drum kit. So that's a good thing, actually. Uh, it increases my precision and discipline. So. And a sticking discipline, so nothing wrong with that. But that's something. That's an adjustment you're going to have to make if you're if you're used to playing acoustic kits and moving over to electronic kits. Now, uh, if you look at the layout, the configuration of my kit, you'll notice it's it's quite different than what you're going to see if you go online and Google. Let's say you Google the Elisa's Command Mesh drum sets. You're not going to see them set up uh, this way or when you see the photos on the product information documents or on the website. Uh, the most noticeable and obvious is the control panel. On most drum sets, the control panel is here, off this bar here. Uh, that doesn't work for me. 
Uh, I like to have it centered off the crossbar between the two posts. Uh, you look at the kick drum. In most cases, the kick drum is centered on the rack here. Okay, so it's dead center, and the drummer has to has to turn about a few degrees and then move the hi hat out. And of course, this this uh, bar here is actually comes out a few more degrees. And really, the drummer is centered off the left post more so than the rack here. Uh, I like my snare drum centered like this. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't like it. Now, the original design of the snare drum, they had this bar here that you, that you attach to the left post, and then you attach the snare drum to this, okay? In my case, this was not workable. This was not doable for me because I need to center the snare off the rack, off the crossbar. And this wasn't quite long enough to help me do that. If it was probably maybe six to eight inches longer, that would have been an option or at least a possibility that I would have explored. So what I did is I got the snare stand from my acoustic kit and used that for the, for the snare drum on this electronic kit. And a lot of the later models or the, or the more advanced models of the Alesis do provide a dedicated snare stand. It's the command ones in the earlier or the lower lower end models that, that provide the snare bar. So I went ahead and for, um, forewent the um, snare bar because it just doesn't work for me. So I got an extra clamp. You never know what I'll use it for, but anyway, it's just there. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and centering the snare here and then putting the kick drum here, next to just off the uh, right pole and then I have the hi-hat pedal just off the left pole so really the poles where my feet line up with and there's just more of an ergonomic it's better ergonomically and the reason I do this is because I'm an ambidextrous rider unlike a lot of drummers a lot of your right hand drummers or dominant hand drummers um, like, for instance, if you're right-handed, most right-handed drummers will cross over and play the hi-hat with the right hand. Well, that doesn't work for me. I, I prefer, if the, the hi-hat is on the left-hand side of the kit, why not just play the hi-hat with your left hand? Uh, conversely, I ride the right cymbal with my right hand for the same reason I ride the hi-hat with my left hand. It's because it's the right so, yeah, there you go. So, this setup is best for me, even though the original designers and developers of this kit did not have this configuration in mind when they designed this kit. It's flexible enough that it allows me to adjust to my body type and my, my playing style and stuff like that. So it works well. This table that you see here, this was not, this did not come with the kit. This is an accessory. It's made by Menal. And uh, basically it's a table without legs. It has a clamp on the end that you clamp it to any vertical piece of hardware. And it allows me to, um, you know, put my iPhone here, my water, and stuff like that. Um, this, um, this control panel does have an auxiliary in channel where if you want to play with your iTunes, you can do that. Okay, and a lot of the drum covers I do are on my iTunes, and so I'll just pipe it in there. And so, yeah, you can hear um, it, it's so from a sound system standpoint, it's really kind of handy to have this. I've got some advantages that I don't have with my acoustic kit when it comes to the sound. Now, I'm using a Sony amplifier right now just for demonstration purposes so you can hear the kit, but you can use headphones, it does have a headphone channel. And uh, it has an independent he headphone channel, so you can adjust the volume uh, from the headphones or the amp uh, independently of each other. Or you could, I could just turn this thing off and just go with just headphones when I'm just doing my own practicing and there's, I don't have an audience to play for, uh, which is most of the time. Uh, also, I have my earbuds here 
Uh, you can play with your earbuds or headphones. I like the headphones a little bit better because you hear the more of the fuller sound. Um, um, now there's some uh, nice little features the uh, the brain has. Now you there are YouTube channels that talk about the command series, uh, the command X, the command mesh, because there's several um, uh, models, lines of Elisa's drums that use the same control panel. When you know when you get up to the more advanced like the uh, Strike Kit or the Strike Pro Kit, then obviously they change this up considerably and they have a lot more bells and whistles. But for the mid-range and the lower range, most, most of them use the same command, you know, whether you have a command X or a command mesh, um, the same, the same uh, control panel. Uh, it does have some interesting features like a click track. Because, um, you know, if you're going to be a good drummer, effective drummer today, even, even a live performance, some uh, bands uh, want you to play the click. If that, now there's a bell there that you can hear that, that, that rings on one, but if that bell gets on your nerves, well, you can just take the bell out and just go with a straight click. And they also have a visual, too, uh, not just audio, so when you see the light light up, So, um, yeah, if you want to tighten up your grooves and, you know, be, be more solid in your grooves, well, that, that it has a built-in metronome or click track to help you do that. And, of course, you can just adjust your tempo by moving the arrows. Oh, that's the, uh, excuse me. That's 100 beats per minute. Oh, boy. Hold on. Here we go. Now that's 112 beats per minute, so if you, anyway, you can adjust your tempo to whatever you want to adjust it to. Alright, let's turn that off. It's getting on my nerves. Uh, let me put it down to 100. It also has a bunch of songs, uh, pre-recorded songs, just generic uh, songs with different types of genres over, over 70, or about 70 to be exact. Uh, so, for instance, if your music director says, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try playing this samba song," so you know, work on your samba grooves, so learn the samba genre. And you don't know anything about samba? Well, this this uh, this piece of equipment actually has this stuff stored in there. So let me. That's one samba sample. There's another one on here, samba too. Uh, on here. So if you if you've never played samba or have no concept of what samba's like, well, you know you got you got a, a library of uh, songs that that'll uh, do that. Now this is samba minus the drum. So let's say you want to hear the drum track to that. Well, that won't be difficult. So there you go. You can listen to this drum part, learn that drum part, duplicate it, and then uh, after you master the drum part, you can take the drums out and play with it. And you can do that with any genre. I mean, they've got fusion, blues, um, soul, R&B, big band. Uh, Classic rock, metal, dance, salsa, balsa, um, swing, reggae, punk, Latin, country, dance, I already said dance, I think, bebop, big band jazz, blues, I think I said blues. Uh, so anyway, they've got all sorts of genres, if, so if, they're, if you're weak in, or, or not knowledgeable in any particular genre, well, this is a good tool to, to help you brush up on those genres and a uh, nice little thing to have. Oh, uh, let me think, what else? Uh, also, kit sounds. They have different kit sounds, and they have about 70 basic kit sounds to work with with your bass line. So what I did is I went through all the kit sounds and actually wrote them down, their number and their names. And then after that, I wrote an asterisk by those kit sounds that I'm, I'm particularly partial to. And I put it 
on the rock sound 004 because I think that's the best of all that I've heard so far. Now you can do customization on here. That I don't know how to do. I'm sure there's videos that could teach you how to do that. There are other YouTube videos that talk about the Alex, the Alesis uh, drum set, electronic drum set, um, and they get more into the features of this uh, command module or the control panel. But I'm just giving you a basic thumbnail sketch. So that's basically it. Uh, that's all I wanted to tell you. Um, it's just get you an up to date, give you an up to date on my drumming situation. Uh, there's a possibility I might do some drum covers with this. Uh, at the very least, I'll use it to practice on and learn my songs. Like I have a project that I'm working on right now that actually the sound of this Alesis drum kit would actually, um, you know, work with this particular song. Maybe some of the other songs, maybe not so much. So I may have to learn the song on the Alesis and then, then find a location and, and shoot on location with my acoustic drums. So we'll just have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel, watch some of my drum covers and other teaching videos. In the meantime, take care and God bless.